Hey guys, V here, and in today's video, we're going to go ahead and review the Master Liquid ML240L version 2 from Cooler Master. I got it installed in this PC. Um, I actually did an install video. If you're interested in seeing that, I'm going to link it in the description down below. And of course, there will be links to um, purchase this if you're interested in the description down below as well. Now, before we get into this review, uh, I'm going to talk about the channel real quick. If you're not interested in that and just want to see the review on the AIO, uh, I will put a timestamp down below at the start of the review. So go ahead and check that out if that's what you want to do. With that being said, this video will be the start of a new segment on my channel called something along the lines of five minute reviews. I'm not really sure how long this is going to take, but I think uh, I'm going to try to keep every review five minutes or less, maybe a little bit more. We'll see. But point is, I'm going to be reviewing parts to PCs, PC parts, and, and possibly software. We'll see how far that goes. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Um, and if you have any requests to a specific part or something that you might want me to review, definitely let me know. Uh, I don't have a ton of money that I can just go and buy all all of the parts so uh, we'll see how this goes but that being said uh, I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel and um, if you're currently watching and you're not subscribed and you want to see more PC builds and reviews feel free to subscribe I would really appreciate it we just passed 200 subscribers and I am super super thankful for that now with all that being said let's get into this review first thing we're going to talk about is the install I wouldn't really call it hard to do but it's not exactly easy if that makes any sense um, the parts bags that come in the box itself d aren't really labeled very well so getting into all the parts and the screws you're gonna have to kinda go and search for them open up the bags make sure this fits make sure that fits otherwise if you already know what you're looking for it could be very easy personally it was a little bit time consuming just because of that that reason but the install itself isn't terrible it isn't really too hard and um, you know if I had to rate it from a, on a scale of 1 to 10 I would say it's between a 6 and a 7 unless you're you're really good at this kind of stuff then you know but for a beginner I would say 6 or a 7 the good thing is all the cables and stuff from the fans and the and the water pump itself are very long there isn't any cable shortage and you gotta buy extensions or anything basically you know you got plenty of cable to ride it how you want also these liquid pipes right here they do move up or down I have them just like this and that's exactly how I like it the good thing is like many AIOs it does support lots and lots of different sockets so what that means is this is an AMD AM4 socket and it fits this but it'll also fit plenty of different um, Intel sockets and uh, also I believe all or most of the AMD sockets which is really really great as far as compatibility goes this is definitely not an issue with all that being said let's talk about the pump itself because it uses a three pin connection so this cable right over here going from the pump to the CPU header on the motherboard um, it only uses a three pin uh, connection so the pump itself will run at full speed at all times but in my personal opinion that's perfect because you want the pump to always run at max speed unless you have a specific reason but usually for anyone else you will have it running at full speed so that the water goes in and out as fast as possible and through here so it can cool the pump itself is a dual chamber design what that means is the top part here and the bottom part there are two separate chambers so the water will come through this hose here go into the top and then go the pump itself will suck the water down to where the CPU um, is touching the block and then it'll come out the other hose go up into the radiator go down and be cooled so it's a pretty great design and like I said before it is very silent uh, in my opinion especially for the price 
I have used the version 1 of this exact cooler and this one definitely outperforms it as far as temps go. The looks of this one are also uh, quite a bit better than version 1. This one definitely looks more premium and doesn't look like a budget AIO. Uh, the first version definitely looked a little more budget. I, I don't know, I didn't really like the look of the CPU block. It was kind of rounded and it, it was a bit smaller, but it was also, you know, rounded. And it just, I don't know, to me it just screamed cheap at you. This one actually feels and looks premium. So when you got the glass over here and you're looking at it, it looks like a premium AIO. Um, so in my opinion, this is the way to go versus, versus version 1. Now, let's get to the fans. As far as the fan uh, noise levels, it's it's fairly quiet. It's It doesn't bother me. But if you're the type of person that needs it to be silent, this these fans are definitely not it. Of course, you can swap the fans out and put whatever fans you want. Uh, it is compatible with different fans, but then you're spending more money. So it really depends. Are you saving enough money to just get different fans or not? But this these fans... The only issue I have, they're not really crazy loud, but at idle, there is always a constant whine. Even with a, fan, a custom fan curve, there's always this little whine. I don't know if it has something to do with the bearing that are just a little more noisy, but like I said, I don't mind it. And it's definitely quieter than version one for sure. Version one to me was really annoying. <laughs> and like I said, I don't even care for noise. Um, I definitely wouldn't call that a deal breaker as far as the noise go. Uh, so the fans themselves, they use four pin. Uh, remember I told you about the fan block, they only use, it only uses three pin, so it runs at full speed. These, however, do have the speed control they run on the four pin and uh, basically you can adjust the fan curve so it's been on the whole time it's actually fairly quiet but like I said that little bit of wine um, the RGBs on it as you can tell from the video they are actually very bright very vivid the fans connections are four pin 12 volt um, RGB connections so basically on your motherboard, you will need a four pin uh, RGB header. So definitely look into that before you get this. But also, the, it does come with its own controller that you can actually use to plug into your power supply. So you can power the RGBs uh, differently, uh, but you know, it's I like controlling everything through software. In the case of using the power supply to power them, you can't do that. So keep that in mind. So here we're going to go ahead and do a quick uh, stress test just to see how hot it gets over time. I did a two minute test, of course, sped up. And by the end of the test, we got up to 67 degrees Celsius. And now here's the timer, 18 seconds to get back down to its normal idle tempo. I've had it for a couple weeks now, and honestly, it, it does fantastic. It's on a Ryzen. 3600 no overclock as of right now and the temps um, as you'll see in a little bit I'll put some temp comparisons between the stock cooler and you'll see that it actually holds its own it does very very well but it definitely this cooler definitely does its job it for $80 you can't go wrong with this cooler I'm about ready to call it one of the best coolers for the price I would consider this 100% for my personal build and actually I might install one of these into my personal build we'll see in my experience in the past couple weeks of having this I highly recommend this uh, AIO to me it's just for the price you can't go wrong it is a solid AIO I definitely recommend it if you're on the fence about it don't be it's a great AIO um, like I said, the noise levels is is really up to you to judge. In my opinion, it's not bad. Some people, you know, have different tastes in that. But it is 
definitely worth the eighty dollars. Actually, it might even be worth more, but I don't want to give Cooler Master any ideas to raise the price. <laughs> um, with all that being said, I really appreciate you guys watching these these videos, my videos, my channel. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. Uh, we're on the road to a thousand subs. We are 20% there and I am super excited for that. But um, that's all I got for you in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you don't mind giving it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Peace.